morning and welcome to God's house this morning on this third Sunday of end time, also the Sunday of Saints Triumphant. And in our worship this morning, we are going to be focusing on the blessings we are going to enjoy in heaven once we leave this earth of sin and we are, when we are joined together with the Saints Triumphant already in heaven. We begin our worship by singing our opening hymn, hymn 551 verses 1 through 3. Continue on the bottom of page three of your service folder. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. I heard a voice from heaven say, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. The saints of the Most High will receive the kingdom and will possess it forever. Yes, forever and ever. Beloved in the Lord, we desire to one day join the saints triumphant in heaven, yet we have disobeyed God and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me. A sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
Almighty God and Savior, you have set the final day and hour when we shall be delivered from this world of sin and death. Keep us ever watchful for the coming of your Son, that we may sit with him and all your holy ones at the marriage feast in heaven. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Invite your attention to the scripture lessons there printed out for you in your service folder for our Saints Triumphant Sunday. First one from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah chapter 65. This will also serve as the basis for the sermon today. And you will note that following our first two lessons there is the song hymn response. There will not be an introduction before we start to sing. See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight, and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard in it no more. Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not live out his years. The one who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere child. The one who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them, or plant and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people, my chosen ones, will long enjoy the work of their hands. They will not labor in vain, nor will they bear children doomed to misfortune. For they will be a people blessed by the Lord, they and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, and dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. But then there breaks... Second lesson from the Revelation of St. John, chapter 22, beginning at verse 1. Here we see a glimpse of what awaits us in the church triumphant. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need a light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light. They will reign forever and ever. The angel said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God who inspires the prophets, sent his angel to show his servant the things that must soon take place. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy written in this scroll. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and seen them, when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. Alleluia, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. Alleluia. From earth's wide bound.
I invite you to stand and honor the gospel. Words and works of Jesus today recorded for us in Luke chapter 20. Some of the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus with a question. Teacher, they said, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves him a wife but no children, the man must marry the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first one married a woman and died childless. The second, and then the third married her, and in the same way the seven died, leaving no children. Finally, the woman died too. Now then, at the resurrection, whose wife will she be, since the seven were married to her? Jesus replied, The people of this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are considered worthy of taking part in the age to come and in the resurrection from the dead will neither marry nor be given in marriage, and they can no longer die, for they are like the angels. They are God's children, since they are children of the resurrection. But in the account of the burning bush, even Moses showed that the dead rise, for he calls the Lord the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for to him all are alive. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. We invite children to come forward at this time for a children's devotion. Following that, we'll join to sing the hymn of the day, hymn 728. Thanks for coming up, everybody. I'm, the reading that Pastor just read, I'm going to pick out one verse and reread it so we, we have it fresh in our minds here. And they can no longer die, for they are like the angels. They are God's children, since they are children of the resurrection. And here, Jesus is talking about us. We are children of the resurrection. Now, quick, I want you to turn around and point or wave to your families, wherever they're sitting. Point, point or wave to them really quick. Yeah, so we, so we all have our families here, right? Who, who's a part of your family? If you can raise your hand. Pardon me. Who's a part of your family? Mom and dad? And, what about you? Yeah, your mom, your dad, your grandmas, your grandpas, your, your cousins, your aunts, your uncles. We all have our families, right? But I can also say that every single person in this room is a part of your family. Yeah, why can I say that? <laughs> we can say that because we are all a part of God's family, right? When we are baptized into the faith, we are a part of God's family. And when Mary gave birth to Jesus, he became our brother. And because Jesus has a father in heaven and Jesus is our brother, we also have a father in heaven who cares for us, who watches over us, and who loves us just like our families on earth do, too. And when people share a faith in Jesus, we are all a part of that same family. So when you turn around and look at everyone in this room, we're all a part of the same family. And, and same goes for the people who are already in heaven. They are a part of our family, too. They are the saints triumphant, which is the Sunday that we're celebrating today. And because Jesus rose from the dead... We are children of the resurrection because he is our brother. And because of that, we have heaven to look forward to, the, the wonders that we can look forward to someday when we get to see our Savior face to face. So let's thank God and ask him for, for making us a part of his family. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus as our brother. As your children, you know what is best for us, and you knew that we needed a Savior. Help us to always believe in the resurrection of your Son, so that we may live forever with you and our family of believers in heaven. Amen. Thanks for coming up, everyone.
please stand. Our sermon text for this morning, as Pastor said earlier, comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 65. I will just read the first couple verses. See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and crying will be heard in it no more. So far the word of our Lord. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, do you have moments and memories in your life that you wish that you could forget? Possibly embarrassing moments? Say you're walking down the street and you trip over your own feet and you hit the ground. And you're not hurt, you only hurt your pride, but you hope that no one saw, but of course some people did. And your face gets bright red and your heart starts pounding and you wish that you could just go on with your day and forget about it. But your friend that's with you won't stop bringing it up and laughing at your expense. You're embarrassed and you want to forget it. Once I was at a restaurant and the waiter brought the food to our table and said, enjoy. And without even thinking about it, I said, thanks, you too. <laughs> and all I wanted to do was just take the check and leave the restaurant so I didn't have to face that waiter again. I was embarrassed and I wished that I could forget that memory, but I can't. Or say you lost a loved one. And every once in a while, or every year, on the anniversary of their passing, the pain feels as real as the day that you heard the news. And you don't want to forget them, but you wish that the pain would go away, that pit in your stomach would go away. The world is full of sin. This isn't groundbreaking news. And I think it would be pretty great if we could just have a delete button, like on a computer, and just delete all of those bad memories any time we couldn't get rid of them. And while we may not be able to do this on this earth, God tells us in heaven we will be able to not remember those bad memories someday. As God's everlasting family, he welcomes us home. As God's everlasting family, he tells us, don't remember but rejoice forever. God's people at the time of Isaiah had a lot of memories on their minds that they couldn't forget, even though they might have wanted to. They abandoned God. When Israel was prospering, when times were great, they didn't remember God. They didn't thank God for all of the things he did for them. He protected them, he guided them, he loved them, everything that he did for them, and they just threw it all away and turned to their own devices. And God, in his wisdom, told them that they were going to be taken captive by the countries of that time. God promised them that it would happen, and we know that God always keeps his promises. So that's exactly what happened. Israel went into captivity and because of that, they suffered for the sins that they uh, did against God. And only in their most dire need did they turn back to God and ask for his help and forgiveness. And we know that God responded with that help and love and forgiveness. God promised them a Messiah. One who would take all of their sins away, one who would restore Israel one who gave them the hope of everlasting life where they could forget all of those memories forever. And the same can be said about us today. We have memories and moments in our life that we wish we can forget. We live in this painful reality where we suffer and we get sick and eventually we die. And the creation that we are living in today is so far removed from the perfect creation that God made in the beginning that I don't think we could even imagine what it would be like if we didn't have Genesis to tell us what it did look like in the beginning. And every day we have sins 
that nag at our hearts, sins that we can't forget. And the devil's sitting there in our ear telling us, remember when you did that? Remember when you did that thing? And we know that those sins are forgiven. Every sin is forgiven, but that memory will always be there, telling us the times when we messed up, when we sinned against God. And in this world, when we get hurt or we get sick, we weep. When we lose a loved one, we cry. And we face these painful realities every day. God takes people of any age from this world to his side in heaven. And it's hard for us to understand why he would do that. And we can never truly be prepared for when something like that happens. So we're living in this reality today, but God tells us that we get to look forward to a new reality where these things won't be in our lives anymore. He tells us, the sound of weeping and crying will be heard in it no more. Never again will there be an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not live out his years. The one who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere child. They will not labor in vain nor will they bear children doomed to misfortune. These sinful realities that we live in will never be remembered again because just like Israel at the time of Isaiah, God gives us this promise too. See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. What an amazing picture that is. When God calls all of his believers to be home with him in heaven, he's going to create a new heavens and a new earth for us. Now, we may not know what that looks like. In fact, in the hymn that we just sang, we are assured that we, we, we don't know what heaven's going to be like. But I can imagine as we're standing there in awe and amazement at what God has made for us, I can imagine him saying, this is how I intended it to be in the beginning. I made this for you. And we're not even going to remember what earth used to be like. Earth, what, what, what is that place? This place is much more great. We're not going to remember anything from this earth. In fact, God promises that we won't remember the sinfulness of our past. And we know that God always keeps his promises. And not only will we not remember, but neither will God. Because of Jesus' sacrifice for us, because of the blood he shed for us, when God looks at us, he doesn't see sin. He sees his son. And because he sees his son, he sees us as pure and holy in his sight, and we are able to enjoy the splendors of heaven with him forever we can be assured that we won't remember the sinfulness of our past, but we will rejoice forever in what God will create for us. And he tells us, be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create, for I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. The new Jerusalem will be a delight to us. Just before, the chapter before Revelation that pastor read earlier, John gives us a little taste of what this new Jerusalem might look like. He says it's going to have walls of jasper. The city is going to be made of pure gold decorated with every kind of precious stone. Streets of gold as pure as glass. No need for created light because the glory of God will give it light. And the river of the water of life running through it all. And as if it could not get any better than that, we're going to be with God. We get to see our Savior face to face, and we will reign with him forever. That will be a reality someday, because God promises it will be a reality someday. We will never again have to remember this earth and, how, and the sin that we lived in. And we also get this promise. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. Not only will we be rejoicing because we're in heaven in this new creation and we're in the presence of our God, but he will take delight in us. 
This is proof that God wants us to be in heaven with him. He doesn't want anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And because he wanted that so badly for us, he sent his son for us to pay for our sins so that we could enjoy these splendors of heaven with him forever. Without Jesus, this would have just been a dream that would have never come true. The world would have been forever lost, suffering eternally. When God promised that his Messiah would come, It gave the Old Testament believers hope. When the Messiah did come, it gives us New Testament believers hope that he will come again on Judgment Day. We are all a part of God's everlasting family. Through our baptisms, we become a part of this family of believers. And when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we are assured of that forgiveness. And when we gather together, to, gather together to receive that forgiveness, we get a taste of what the banquet in heaven is going to be like when we get there someday. We all have people in our lives that God has taken from us to be by his side in heaven. Someday we will be reunited with them because we are all a part of this family of believers. They have already received their crown of life, and we are waiting eagerly for that day when we can receive ours as well. And when we are reunited with the saints triumphant, we won't see them as they were on this earth full of sin, but we will see them glorified. And we will all be glorified as we reign with our Heavenly Father forever in perfect eternity. With Jesus as the head of the church, we get a glimpse of what this family dynamic will be like in heaven. Because we are all a part of this family of believers. And when we come into God's house and we worship him and we sing his praises, that's just a glimpse of the praise we will be joining in in heaven. God promises that we won't remember the sinfulness of this earth, and God always keeps his promises. And while we're on this earth waiting for that day when we get to join the saints triumphant and God in heaven, he gives us this promise. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. As our brother, Jesus knows the suffering and pain that we go through every day because he faced that same suffering and pain. And eventually it led him to that cross where he suffered and gave his life to take our pain away from us. And because Jesus suffered, died, and rose victorious, we are children of the resurrection, just as Jesus said in the gospel, and they can no longer die, for they are like the angels. They are God's children since they are children of the resurrection. God promises us that because we believe in the resurrection of his son who has power over death, we can no longer die because we will go to heaven and be like the angels who can't die. And while we're on this earth, God tells us that anytime we call to him, he will hear us. And anytime we want him, he will be there for us in the good times and in the bad. We have moments and memories in our lives that we wish that we could forget. And sometimes when we're going through that pain or suffering, we wish that it could just all go away. And God promises us that it will all go away someday. He promises us that when we, as his everlasting family, reach our heavenly home we're not going to remember the sinfulness we lived in, the things that we have here, because what we are going to be given will be so much greater than what we have now on this earth. We won't remember because God tells us that we won't remember. And he tells us that we will rejoice forever in what he is going to create for us, and he will also take delight in us 
his everlasting family. As God's everlasting family, he welcomes us home. As God's everlasting family, he tells us, don't remember the sinfulness you lived in, but rejoice forever in the perfection that I am creating for you. Amen. Please stand. We will now confess our Christian faith by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we gather our thank offerings to the Lord, and we will also view this month's edition of the Wells Connection. Hi, I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. Our work in Africa is entering an exciting new phase. As the national churches there mature and communication technologies improve, God is giving us new opportunities that we couldn't have imagined only a few years ago. Our Synod's first mission trip to Africa 70 years ago is almost impossible to imagine today. Roads were treacherous, supplies were hard to get, and if something went wrong, there was no one to call, because even landline phones did not exist there. That adventurous spirit and willingness for the sake of the gospel. They pointed people to Christ, they pointed people to scriptures, and we're building on that. Over the decades, the church has grown exponentially, with national leaders emerging and an educational system in place to train African pastors. You have to be eager to work. This blessing has allowed our Wells missionaries to transition to new roles. One result is the creation of the One Africa Team, which facilitates our missionaries helping emerging Christian groups all over the continent. The One Africa team is mobilized to bring Christ-centered, Bible-based guidance wherever there is need. And they're calling for us everywhere. Ghana, Uganda, Kenya, Somalia, Sudan, Liberia, all over, West Africa, East Africa, South Africa, everywhere. They're calling and they're saying, we want the truth of Scripture. They're looking for any partners out there that still teach what the Bible teaches and it's not that surprising that God would lead them to us. Uh, but because of that, we have leads popping up in a dozen new African countries. The result is that our missionaries spend more time on the road as they bring God's word to fledgling Christian groups who need encouragement and basic instruction. A lot of travel for our missionaries, um, a lot of tough work going into new places, but we're expanding beyond just those few places that we had started with so many years ago. Of course, every African country is unique, and our missionaries must customize the approach to meet local needs. The One Africa team gives us a better platform to connect in these new regions. Seeing that eureka of the gospel in African eyes that I've seen so many times, that's what I really am excited to spread through 
through our national partners to new places. In a land where fresh water and food are still not always available, it's refreshing to see that, for many Africans, their biggest hunger and thirst is for the true gospel message, a saving, satisfying message we work to supply every day. A few examples of the opportunities the One Africa team is addressing. In Liberia, a 5,000-member church body has requested training, and our missionaries have been offering instruction there, which we pray will lead to church fellowship in the future. In Mozambique, the team is partnering with national pastors to set up a church to serve the growing number of Lutherans there, now numbering nearly 1,000. In Uganda, just recently, a group of 700 Christians has asked for training, and there are a dozen more. The One Africa team is a valuable platform for connecting to the growing opportunities in Africa. We praise our Savior and thank you for helping us support their efforts. We pray responsibly the prayer of the church on page 8 in our service folder. With thanksgiving and praise, O Lord, we remember all your faithful servants who throughout the ages have witnessed to your name, the mighty and the lowly, great leaders and humble men and women, those who have served you in prosperity and those who in the day of trouble have not failed, those in foreign places and those in this land. Heavenly Father, we recall with thanksgiving what you have done for your church through them. May their good works, prompted by your love in Christ and performed to your glory while here on earth, encourage us to live for you. Unite all your people in the true faith and the hope of an eternity at your side and in the love that reveals us to be your children. And Lord Jesus, comfort the family of Dale Van Swall with your precious promises that because you lived, died, and rose again, you have made complete payment for the sins of all and that those who die in you enjoy the blessings of life eternal in heaven. Continue to give healing to Sandy Lujan and Mike Claviter. Encourage Carolyn Hill, who is currently hospitalized, that you will work all things out for her eternal good. Give strength to her and Bob Storr as they both deal with Parkinson's. Hold your loving hand over Darlene and Gina, Dorothy, Brenda, Bertha, and Brad, as they each deal with the challenges of life and in some cases also cancer. Remind them and us that as members of your everlasting family, we can truly rejoice forever. And hear us now, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Holy Spirit, our comfort and trouble and guide through life as you have protected and prospered your saints in the past. Look with favor on us now and bring us safely to eternal glory. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our worship continues as we join to sing hymn 211, I Know of Asleep.
invite you to stand for our closing prayer. Heavenly Father, we recall with gratitude what you have done for us and for your church through all our brothers and sisters in Christ who have joined the church triumphant. Through your word, remind us who have not yet reached heaven that we remain part of the saints militant. Fill us with your spirit so that we continue to wage war for you to win souls for Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. may be seated. We close our service by joining to sing the hymn, I'm But a Stranger Here.
Good morning. Welcome to all who have joined us today, especially our college students and guests. Thank you for being with us. Uh, a reminder, there's no more Monday night services this month because uh, the next two weeks, basically, we will have our Thanksgiving Eve service. Um, there will probably be a Monday night service on Monday, December 9th, and check the December calendar for that. Sunday school service this year, December 15th at 4 o'clock. So the students today should be receiving their uh, memory work for the Sunday school service. Every student will have a part of some kind, whether that's a group recitation and or individual recitations. And uh, we, because we have one less practice this year, please work with your children at home so they can learn those speaking parts. And if you know the tunes, you can sing the tunes at home too. A teen Bible study will happen today in between services. Next week, the, the high school students are welcome to help us with our Festival of Lights Parade float in between services. Um, college students Bible study Wednesday night at 8.15 in room 157. And we have an outing next Friday at Sioux Falls. So on November 22nd, if you're planning to go, please let me know about that. Um, November newsletters in our mailboxes. We have copies for our guests and college students. Uh, information in a bulletin, all kinds, we, we've received enough corn for the feeding Brookings, thank you to all who helped contribute to that. If you still have some you want to bring in, we'll make sure it gets to the food pantry to be used there, or for our students shopping for needy family event. Um, if you uh, can fruits or vegetables, home, home canned stuff, and want to bring something next Sunday that we can put on the altar to decorate for Thanksgiving, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, just new friends, Thanksgiving meal, festival, vice parade, soup and bread lunch, Advent tea, Christmas for kids, all those sign-up sheets are out. Please give them your attention today. Tear out the top sheet of the friendship pad and hand it to the usher on their way out. Thought for the week. Running can be good for your heart, unless you are running people down. God's blessings this new week of grace. <laughs>